extruders, steppers, infill, perimeters. Are you new to 3D printing and confused by all the terminology and concepts? This video is for you then. Hey everyone, Jason here at 3D Matter Makers, and this week I want to address all the people who are either buying their first 3D printer, just bought their first 3D printer, or just curious about the 3D printing process. But before I go any further, I just want to say real quick, if y'all like these videos, please make sure and subscribe to the channel. It helps the channel out a lot, and it helps y'all out by giving you notification of when we have new videos out, and everybody wins, and clicks are free. So about three months ago, when I first got into 3D printing, I was watching a lot of videos and reading a lot of material online, trying to understand all the concepts of 3D printing and what everything was and how it worked. And I feel that there might be a little bit of an area here where I can help still being new in stuff that I struggled learning and figuring out what I needed to learn in order just to get started and to be able to converse with other printers in order to improve my prints. So today we're going to break down the basics of 3D printing and try and get you past the mysterious mythical language of 3D printing and on your way to being a successful fantastic 3D printer yourself. We are going to have to do this video in two parts um, and it's just because there's a lot of material to cover. So part one, we are going to cover the actual printer itself, all of its parts and how they all function. And then next week, we're going to come back and discuss the software side of it, which will include things like actual, you know, 3D modeling software and slicers in order to create the code that goes to your printer and how certain settings of those work. So let's start this week with the basics. What is 3D printing? 3D printing is a printing process that involves making three-dimensional objects from digital models by applying many thin layers of quick drying material on top of each other. Now the most common type of 3D printer is what's called an FDM printer or the Fused Deposition Modeling Printer. It's an additive printing process that works by laying down molten thermoplastic um, that's quickly cooled and layer by layer until your print is complete. Now 3D printers either come in two styles typically, either Cartesian or Delta. Now Cartesian printers typically have a square build surface uh, that usually moves on the Y axis, that's front and back, and it has a print head, or as we call it a hot end, that rides along an X axis that moves left to right, and that entire X axis will move up the Z or Z axis utilizing a lead screw or a ball screw. Delta style printers typically have a round build surface and they have three arms that hang down each with their own stepper motors and the print head is suspended above the build plate and these motors move the arms independently um, up the Z axis and on the X and Y axis to build your print. FDM printers use what is called filament, which is the actual thermoplastic that you print with, that is fed through the hot end and laid onto your print surface to build your print up. Filament comes in a few different sizes and it's dependent on what your particular printer is capable of. But the common sizes are 1.75 millimeters, 2.85 millimeters, and 3.0 millimeters, with 1.75 millimeter being the most common now, typical materials that you will print with include PLA, ABS, PETG, and nylon, as well as some flexible materials such as TPE and TPU, and there are also the exotics such as carbon fiber, wood infused, metal infused, glow in the dark, conductive, um, there's a whole range of different types of materials you can use. But for the most part, people are going to stick with either PLA, ABS, or PETG as their primary printing materials. And out of those, PLA is going to be the most common. And the reason is, is because it's A, the easiest to print with, and B, it's also the most accessible and least expensive of all the types of different types of filament. Now the filament, which is typically on a spool, is fed to the hot end via an extruder, which is just a small stepper motor, which uses a gear to feed the filament. 
Stepper motors are small precision motors that rotate in steps, hence the term stepper motor. And they're typically NEMA 17 motors that move at 200 steps per revolution. Think of the extruder as like a winch and its job is not only to pull the filament off the spool but also push the filament into your hot end. Now the extruder pushes the filament either directly uh, uh, to the hot end or through a Bowden tube and then to the hot end. A Bowden tube is a piece of tubing that's attached to a stationary extruder that's usually mounted somewhere on the frame of your printer and then runs to the hot end. Some printers have what's called a direct drive in which the extruder sits directly on top of the hot end assembly. So what's all this talk about the hot end? Well, the hot end is a heated block whose job is simply to melt the filament so it can be laid down on the print. The hot end is actually comprised of a few parts, uh, which include the nozzle, the heater block, the heater cartridge, the thermistor, the heat brake, and the heat sink and some models will include a Teflon liner in that. So let's break these down. First is the nozzle. That's where your molten plastic comes out and they come in a variety of sizes typically ranging from 0.1 millimeters all the way up to 1 millimeter. And there's also specialty sizes in between up and below and above those. The most common nozzle size that you'll find is 0.4 millimeters, and you'll find that the majority of printers come stock with this particular nozzle size. And they come made out of a couple different materials, including stainless steel, plated, and even ruby tipped. But the most common that you'll see is brass, which is perfectly fine for the majority of filaments available. Now the nozzle screws into the bottom of the heater block, and you can think of the heater block as a chunk of metal which is typically aluminium which is heated in order to melt the filament as it's pushed into it from the extruder. The heater block also has a thermistor attached to it which is basically just a temperature gauge so you can regulate how hot you're printing at. And there's also a heater cartridge inside which is what the current flows through that actually makes the hot end hot. Next is the heat break, which is a short piece that screws into the top of the heater block and the bottom of the heat sink. And its purpose is to help stop the flow of heat upwards. And they're usually made of stainless steel because it's a poor conductor of heat. And then we have the heat sink. And this is for further cooling and to help dissipate any unwanted heat from creeping any further up. They usually have lots of fins on them and there's typically a fan dedicated to cooling them down quicker. Now the last thing is the Teflon liner. Now not all hot ends have these, but it, if it does, it, basically it's a tube that runs from the heat sink to the heat break, which allows for easier printing of PLA specifically. But they also limit the temperature that you can print at, which limits the filaments that you're able to choose from. And as I said, there's a fan dedicated for the hot end, but you might also see a fan on the side and that is usually dedicated to actually cooling the print down faster so you get cleaner prints. Let's delve into the build plate, or it's also known the print bed. As stated before, typically Cartesian printers have a square build plate and typically an undercarriage and an aluminum plate that's separated by screws with springs. And under each screw at the bottom, there's what's called a leveling knob. Many printers also come with what is called the heated build plate. And lastly is the build surface itself. And these are usually some sort of build tack or a PEI film. You know, some printers just come with just the bare aluminum plate and nothing on them. And that's fine. You can print directly to the aluminum plate all you want. You could even use glass or blue painter's tape. Now the last main part are the uh, motherboard and the user interface. Everything that your printer does is controlled by the motherboard. Now the user interface is a small LCD screen which gives you some basic control of the motherboard. Some are a knob that is also a push button. Some are all buttons and some are, you know, a touch screen. Oh, I guess I should also mention that there's a power supply since, you know, electricity is required to run a 3D printer. One thing that you should check is to make sure that the AC setting is correctly set for your country or region. So that's more or less the entire printer and all of its components. Now like I said, next week we're going to come back and we're going to look into the software side, including 
3 d modeling software slicing software and basic configuration parameters that you should know when you get started so that's pretty much going to cover all of our parts for this week's tutorial again i want to mention that if you like these videos please give me a thumbs up and you can subscribe to the channel it helps us out a lot and it's free to click and if you want to get notifications when the video is actually released just click the little bell icon down there and you'll get a notification as soon as it comes online don't forget it doesn't matter what you're making as long as you're making matter i'll catch y'all next week